Hey, welcome back. We're going to continue working on our weapon master, so we're going to be able to start the logic for everything that the weapons have uh, in common. The first thing is, you know, in the first person character, when I'm going to press left click, it's going to start shooting. So we have to figure out how we're going to make that happen. Because I know I did a, another video that, you know, it's handled by the first person character, but this time, it's going to be handled by the master blueprint. It's going to handle the fire for us. And every time we shoot, we're just going to, on our first person character, we're going to have a reference to this blueprint. So this blueprint will handle uh, the firing. Not exactly all the firing, but some of the logic of the firing. So we're just going to do a little comment on this. And I like to put one here telling me that when I open it I know it's the first thing that take action in our blueprint now from here we're gonna do a custom event we're gonna call this on fired so when we fired it's gonna call this code so from our first person character when we press left click it's gonna call this here so we can remove bullets from our guns because all the bullets are controlled by this master blueprint we're going to take our current ammo and clip, not set, but just get. So let's do that now. And from that, we're going to drag and search for uh, less. I'm going to less or equal. I'm going to leave the value as zero. And we're going to OB on our keyboard and just plug it right there. So from on fire, we're going to search for decrement integer. And I'm going to plug it right here. So every time we fire, it's going to remove one from this until we reach zero. And when we reach zero, so if it's true, we want to reload our weapon. So we're going to go under here and just create a custom event. And we're going to call that reload. Now, if we go back to true here, we should be able to call... When we fire, so remove bullets until we reach zero, and it's going to automatically reload for us. If you don't want that automatically to reload for you, well, you remove this. Right? Otherwise, it's going to automatically reload for you when you reach uh, zero bullets in your magazine. I'm going to do a comment on this. So now we have our reload. So to take, you know, ammunition, not ammunition, <laughs> to take ammo from our gun as you remember master blueprint control all the data for our weapons so we have to use this one i'm gonna go through this so when we reload we're gonna drag and search for branch and what's gonna be the condition well it's gonna be our current spare ammo so forgive me right now if i don't explain things correctly i find that very confusing um so the current spare ammo, we're going to take our current spare ammo, so current spare ammo. So it's going to check if we do have enough spare ammo, right? That that ammo, it's not equal to zero, because if it's equal to zero, well, we're not going to be able to reload because we're not going to have ammunition. If it's false, so if we do have more bullet than zero, it's going to go to false here. From that, we want to see if we can fire. You remember, we did that boolean here, can fire. But after thinking about it, it's not this one we're going to use. It's going to be the one in our first person character. Make sure that we have a boolean call can fire. So just go in your first person character, duplicate one of the boolean there, and just call that can fire. Perfect. Now we can take this one and use it in the master class. So we're going to go back to our weapon master class. We're going to get a reference to our uh, first person character and we're going to search for that can fire and we're going to set that can fire so if it's not checked we need to make sure it's not checked so it's mean that we can't fire because we don't want to be able to fire when we are reloading the weapon it's doing an error because i forgot to compile my first person character and now if i compile it's all fixed. So when we're reloading, well, we're going to take our temporary ammo, put it right up here. So the temporary ammo will just get 
a temporary value the time we complete all the code so we don't lose bullets in the void if you know what I mean so we're gonna take our current uh, spare ammo so it's right here and we're gonna plug it to temporary ammo and also we're gonna drag from that and gonna search for a minus so a subtraction I'm gonna subtract that by another subtraction I know it sounds weird right so we're gonna subtract that by our max clip so uh, is it max clip yes max clip size for example if you have a rifle it's gonna be 30 and our current clip size which is what we do have in our magazine right now and from that the top here the top subtraction we're gonna search for clamp because we want to make sure that we're not going over what is the maximum capacity of the weapon that we are currently using so the minimum value would be zero the maximum value will be the amount of bullet max spare ammo right there so it's not going above we're gonna drag from our temp ammo here and we're gonna get our um, current spare ammo so current spare ammo just plug it there and we're gonna plug our clamp to this so now it's gonna set our spare ammo taking in consideration that we cannot go below zero and not above our maximum spare ammo so from that we're gonna take our current ammo in the clip so current ammo in the clip so how much current ammo we have in the clip well we have to do a little calculation which is going to be our temporary ammo so we're going to get our temporary ammo we're going to subtract this by our current spare ammo so what we currently have on us and we're going to add this to our current ammo in clip so our ammo in clip right here if I can move it there we go and plug it right there so it's gonna set our ammo in clip right we do the calculation here to make sure that we're not losing our ammunition and when we have the number we're subtracting the temporary ammo from our current ammo because we want to remove ammo from our spare so if we have 20 bullets it's gonna take the amount of bullet that we need and it's gonna subtract those two together and it's gonna set our new value in our clip which is not it uh, I mean in our clip which is gonna refill the ammunition in our weapon and if we do have enough bullet it's gonna go to the maximum clip size if we don't have enough bullet it's gonna put the maximum that we can fit in according to how much spare ammo that we have so now the logic for reloading is done but also when we reload we have animation so we're going to take a reference to our first person character and if we go in our first person character we have our first person mesh here if you click here it's the first person mesh it's the end of our character so we're going to go and get that so first person first person mesh we're going to click on this because the mesh itself the end of our character it's what is going to play the animation for us and if we drag from that now we're going to be able to play a montage and the montage will be played on our hen for our character and we're going to promote the montage to a variable because because each weapon have different animation so we're going to call that anim reload montage did, did i did something wrong here oh it's right here it's all create in the anim down here so i'm just going to take it and plug it right there I totally forgot that I did that before so we're gonna compile here we're gonna have a delay at the end which is just uh, basically if you know our animation is three seconds well we need three seconds here 
So once again, because it's the master blueprint, we can promote that duration. So we can call that animation duration. Anim duration. I'm going to make sure we put that under animation here. So when we're going to create our child blueprint for our weapon, we're going to be able to see how long it's take to reload a certain weapon. So we can place the same number here. So we have the good delay before we are able to fire again. So our can fire here. So it's not this one we're going to get. We're going to get this one from our first person character. So just copy this. Go all the way back to the end and just plug it right there. And we're going to make sure that we are ticking that box so we are able to shoot again our weapon. And we are compiling this. So now there is a mistake somewhere, and I'm guessing it's because I didn't compile something somewhere. So we're going to go all the way up here and just make sure that <laughs> we're plugging that there on fire. And compile and boom it's solving all our issue i totally forgot to plug it there so don't do the same mistake make sure you <laughs> plug that there there we go so now everything is working so we can take all of our reload logic do a beautiful comment okay and the last thing we need in this actually we need two more things but we need another thing that it's very, very similar to the reload, but it's going to handle when we receive ammo or receiving ammunition for a certain weapon. It's need to add that number to this master blueprint so we can have access to those bullets. So if we have 20 bullets on us, we walk over 10. Now we're going to have 30. So we need to do a calculation for that, right? Because this is just a calculation for what we already have. But sometime we're going to receive ammunition. So we are needed, not needed, but we need to do the calculation for that. So we're going to create a custom event. And I'm going to call that give ammo. And this will be the ammo that we are receiving when uh, we walk over ammunition. So we're going to take our max clip size uh, right here. And our current clip size, uh, no, actually, not this one. It's going to be our max clip size and current clip, ammo and clip. There we go. And we're going to subtract those two. And we're going to get the minimum of those two. So which number is the lowest? And from that, we're going to drag and we're going to have a plus. And we're going to make sure that it's plugged right, right here. And on the top here is going to be our current ammo and clip. So current ammo and clip. Perfect. So we do have that now. And from that, we're just going to drag and we're going to set our current ammo and clip. There we go. And plug that right there. So from our um, custom event here, we need to add an input. So we're going to click and add input. And this input will be ammo to give and we're going to make sure that it's a integer so we're going to use that later when we walk over certain ammunition we're going to feed the number we want to give to the player from here and it's going to do that calculation for us we're going to drive from that and search for a minus so a subtraction and we're going to subtract the minimum here we're going to put it right there and from that we're going to need our uh max 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 spare ammo with our current spare ammo current spare ammo we're going to subtract those two together and we're going to get once again the minimum of it so the number that is the lowest we're going to plug it right there and this one will be plugged to the minimum right up here from the minimum here we're going to search for a greater and we're going to plug this to a branch and we're going to plug the branch to our current ammo and clip. And if it's true, well, we're going to set our current ammo and clip. Uh, actually, no, it's going to set our current spare ammo because we're going to add this to our spare ammo, not directly to our gun. And we're going to drag from that. We're going to search for plus. And the plus will be our current 
spare ammo and it's going to be this value right here okay so it seems a little bit confusing but basically when we are walking over an ammunition in the game which is a blueprint we're going to do later it's going to feed a certain number to this right so we're taking the max clip size that we have minus what we have in our uh, gun right we find the number that is the lowest and we take that number and we add this to our current ammo and clip and we set the ammo and clip that we have and same thing at the bottom here now we do it for the uh, spare ammo that we have in our current spare ammo we find the minimum of those two and it's take the lowest of those two bring it there and it's going to add our current spare ammo that we have on us with the new value that we have and it's going to set that to what we have in our pocket basically so it's a little bit confusing but it's working pretty good uh, we cannot test it right now obviously because we need to a weapon in our gun there's so much more work to do before being able to test this out so we're going to be able to test that at a later date so we can select all of this and do a comment just to remind ourselves what this code is doing what well, this code is replenish i don't know if it's a good word but the ammo when pickup right as i said when we're going to walk on ammunition we're going to call this so we can add some ammunition in our weapon the other thing that we have to do remember we put a flashlight here so we need to do the flashlight logic right so let's do that now we have a custom event so we're going to add a custom event we are going to call that uh, flashlight activation we're going to search for branch or you can just alt b on your keyboard so we did a variable that has flashlight here so we're going to get that and we're going to plug it right there so if the weapon has a flashlight we're going to be able to access this code so if it's true well we're going to play a sound and it's going to be a sound for the flashlight you know the kind of click 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 when you press right or whatever you want uh you can do a play a sound to the so it's going to play everywhere in the level or if you just want to play it at location you can just do at location especially if it's a multiplayer game you want to make sure you play at location not you know playing the entire map but from that we're going to search for a flip-flop which is right here so when we press once it's going to go there and when we press again it's going to go there and when we press again it's go there and so on if it's a it's mean that we're activating the flashlight when we click once it's up to you but you know most of the flashlight you have the click before you have the light right so i'm gonna put a little delay i'm gonna put something like 0.5 seconds you don't have to to put any delay if you don't want to but i like to have a little delay so it's giving the game the time to have the click before the lights comes on from that we're going to get a reference to our um first person character and we're going to drive from that and search for drain our battery so we're going to set our drain battery so remember here in the first person character we just need a boolean that it's called show drain battery so it should be right here there you go so just put that up here if you do not have it just you know cut duplicate one of those by here just call it show drain batteries and uh, not batteries but battery and you should be all set we're going to compile that i'm going to go back to here and when we're clicking we want to drain the battery of our flashlight so we make sure that this bus this box is checked we're going to take our flashlight here and from the flashlight we're going to search for toggle active uh, sorry toggle visibility and we're going to plug it right there we're going to make sure we check this box here after that here it's going to be a reference to our first person character so take our first person character put it right there and here we're going to call the drain for flashlight so the flashlight drain 
function will be in our first person character. So in our first person character, we need a custom event for the flashlight. So we're just going to go in the first person character. We're going to create a custom event and we're just going to call this uh, drain flashlight battery. And we're going to do the code later, but at least we have access to this now. If we compile, go back to our weapon master, we're going to be able to access the drain flashlight battery. And just plug it right there. So when we click again, we want to turn off the flashlight. So we're going to go from B. We're going to search for delay. Same again. 0.5 seconds. And from our first person character, we're going to need the show drain. So we're going to copy this. I'm going to plug it right there and this time I'm going to make sure it's not check and the target need to be our first person character. So it's stopping the show drain boolean from our first person character. From the flashlight we want to turn the lights off. So let's turn this off make sure it's unchecked and we are all done with that and obviously if that is off it's going to go to here so this will stop by itself. So we're going to compile this and we're just going to select all of that code. And this is basically, we're going to do a comment. It's going to be on number five and it's going to be flashlight logic. So now here you have pretty much everything we need from our master class that control our weapon. So the weapon master class is completed. If there is anything else, obviously we can come back and just add it. But for now, all the function for our weapon are there. So if you go for an example here on the default class on the top, when you're going to create a child blueprint, you're going to have access to a montage to play, which is that we don't need. So you get all the function here. So if you go down, everything we created, well, we're going to have access to the weapon sound the damage, the recoil, is it automatic, yes or no, uh, how many ammo you have and all that jazz, um, is it like automatic, not automatic, what kind of bullets, what kind of weapon, which animation, how long the animation should last and blah, 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 blah. So we do have everything we need to control each of our three weapons that we're going to have in the game. Um, I think we should be good with that. The only thing we can maybe just remove the campfire here because we're not going to use it in that blueprint. It's going to be the one from the first person character. And I will catch you on the next one. See ya.